Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So this video kickstarts my Easter series 2020. So I've just finished Mother's Day and now we're moving on to Easter and I've been looking forward to this. I've had a lot of these projects now for a while so I'm really excited to start sharing them with you all. So I thought I would kickstart with something that's quite a meaty project. It's something that you can get your teeth into, spend a bit of time on and have it ready in time for Easter if it was Easter themed that you wanted to do. Because of course with all my projects you don't have to do them or definitely decorate them how I have. This would look fantastic for Christmas, for Halloween, for a birthday gift, you know, whatever you want really. It could just be a nice, you know, piece to have in your home all year round in the colours of your home, for example. So it's entirely up to you what you do with it. But this is my Easter wagon or my spring wagon but it's just so cute. So you could pretend to pull it along if you wanted to add real moving wheels on it. But if I just kind of sit it like this, it's really hard, I can't get it all in view. It's a nice size and the lid comes off and it's a storage box or a gift box. Like I said, you could have a very special gift in here, but um, mine is gonna be storage for over Easter. It's gonna be a centerpiece. So I plan to do lots of eggs around it and I'm gonna make, create a little scene. But just to give you a look, closer there you've got Easter eggs piled outside the house you've got a little I'm trying to get it the right way around apologies let's go this way here you've got a little kind of tea set outside the front there you've got jumbo carrots <laughs> you've got the little milk churn and plants and flowers and the holographic cardstock bunting on the side here, you've got those lovely windows that I use, which are the Christina Griffiths ones from the Province Collection, the ones with the shutters, beautiful crocheted flowers, little wooden bunny, I love the wagon wheels and all the detail. And then you've got a rose, little rose bush there. On the back, I've got a little bit of detail. I haven't done too much on the back because you're never really gonna see any of that, but, and then this tinsel everywhere. So it is in, is it in true mixed up craft style, in Sam style, it's over the top colourful, bold and I love it. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial and yeah let's start. Okay so this is the paper pad that I'm going to be using. I'm going to use this is either going to be the stripes, the polka dot and then this which I've already done for the base here because it's that kind of um, decking kind of look. So this is the very bottom and this is a piece of 7 by 11 it's the 2 mil grey board which I always use and it's always linked. Now to cover it, I went and done that off camera just because you're just wrapping the paper around and sticking it down. But it was a piece of that which was 12 and I don't think I cut anything off. So yeah, it looks like 12 by 12. You, I mean, you can trim it if you want to, but just wrap it around. I've used my Kalau and that's, you know, just become a really nice solid piece now. So it's definitely going to hold some weight to it. So get that one all prepared. Also, when you've covered it, just go around the corners and kind of just like round them off. You know, you just get a nice finish there. And if you want to put some decorative metal edges on them as well, you can do. Okay, so then you'll need two pieces. So these are going to be for your front and back, okay? And these are five and a half by six. If you want to cut a door out of yours, then you'd want to do that now before we start to stick everything together. But I'm just going to stick one of my die cuts on them. So the box itself will just be, you know, completely solid. I'm not going to be cutting any windows or anything. So two pieces of that. Then the roof, you want two pieces of nine by five. The roof I'm going to do later, okay? Because we can do that right at the end. And then for the, I am going to do a base which I can then add glue to and stick onto this piece. I think it's just gonna be easier. So you want one piece of five and a half by eight, and then for your main sides here, you want two pieces that are six by eight, okay? So what we want first of all is the front and back and the sides, okay? The base will come later along with that. And then I've just gone and cut all these kind of hinge pieces. Because I wanna add pattern paper, I'm gonna add the hinges this time rather than wrap the paper around. And um, yeah, I just think it's just gonna be a bit easier. So you wanna get a paper that's gonna kind of complement the papers you're gonna use, okay? So I've gone for this kind of like yellowy color, which is gonna match really nicely with the papers. So you are gonna need four pieces that are two by six. Okay, first of all, grab the front or back, it doesn't matter, they're both the same size. Pop them over there for the minute. And you wanna do it so that you have half an inch, one inch on one side, and then one inch will wrap around onto one of your bigger side pieces, like this. So, it's up to you what glue you're gonna use. I am gonna stick with my Kalau. It does take a little bit longer, but it will, you know, it'd be worth it because the whole piece becomes solid. So this is the little paper that I'm using. 
this one here and it is it doesn't tell you the weight I don't think oh there it does 135 GSM okay which is it doesn't tell you in pounds but um, it's perfect for this so just fold it in half there just so you've got a rough idea of you know where your inch is I'm gonna have to fill this up definitely in a moment so I'm just gonna pop my glue all on one side there once I've shown you how to do one, I'll put the rest on high speed because it's very, very easy. So along the six inch side, obviously the five and a half is the, you know, the top or the bottom. So just stick that on there. And just make sure you've brought that right around like so. Push down on that. I'm just gonna let that dry a minute and fill this up quickly. Okay, and then I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna work on this side as well, so I'm just going to fold this one in half. Don't have to be exact, don't worry about getting your scoreboard out and that kind of thing, just as long as it covers like so. And then that one can go on that side. There. Okay, then grab one of the side pieces, so the 6x8, and you want to add glue onto the other side of the tab and keep it folded right over and then you're gonna there will be obviously a you know that two mil that will actually stick to the side of this so I'm sticking this side of this piece here onto this piece you see there so it's on top of it not on the side of it so keep this upright and you can then push against and hold that at a really nice right angle so just hold that there for a minute until that starts to dry Okay, so you can see there where that is stuck on top of this piece. It's not on the side of it. So again, I'm just going to hold that like so. Open up this one. Pop my glue all on there. Make sure you run the glue along the side as well. And then I'll put a little bit on top. Okay, I'm going to bring it up this way. Grab the other side, so the other 6x8 piece. And again, we're sticking it on top of that grey board. And then with the other two pieces, again, just fold them in half and pop the hinges on the sides of this last five and a half by six piece. And add glue onto, you can do both at the same time or one at a time. Again, make sure you go along the sides and on top of the grey board. I'll do one at a time and then you're going to stick it onto this one again making sure it sticks onto this piece not next to it actually I am going to do both at the same time because then I can just get them stuck down like evenly okay so that's our box now all taking shape. Then I've cut four pieces of two by five and a half. Again, fold them in half and you're going to just put them over the top here. You might have to cut a little bit off actually because obviously we've come in a little bit because of the way that we've put that grey board in. So just snip a bit off and make sure you get a really nice snug fit like so. It's going to cover the top and the bottom of both of these ends. Okay, so get them all stuck down. Okay, so you should have that now on the two ends and then you want to cut four pieces of eight by two and do exactly the same now on the longer sides, okay? just about to stick down these ones and then thought actually you need to add the hinges onto the base so this is the five and a half by eight so what I will say is you probably just want to go around and do the tops and then do the bottom ones on the base so I'm just going to recut these two sizes here but I'm just going to stick one on that side because then you can attach this all to the bottom of the the frame that we've just made. 
So if I just pop that one on there, I'll just show you. So I'll stick the cut the other two so that length I've done there, but then that can stick onto the base like this. And then I'm going to add glue onto that and stick it onto this piece here. So yeah, I'd stick stick those ones on there, just make sure they all line up. Okay, so that's stuck down and then I have, oh not on that one, just put glue on all four sides, okay? And then you can sit it over the top. And pop each one on the side and just push down inside here. And you might have to trim off any little bits that may overhang, like I've got some there, because obviously, you know, we might just need sliding across, actually. I think that's okay. Okay, now I have got some little bits of grey board visible there, so it might be a, been worthwhile for me to have put my long strips on this grey board before I put the side hinges on at the beginning. But I'm going to be heavily decorating this. The roof's going to be on top of this as well and you're not going to see it. But I'm, I'm going to be having like vines and grasses and stuff. So I'll probably just stick a couple over there. You're not going to see it. So I'm really not worried about that. But, you know, if you are someone that, um, you know, that's going to bother you, then just cover it just before you stick the hinges off. It's, it's easily sorted. But I'm really pleased with what we've got. We've got a nice solid box here and that's just going to get even you know more stronger as that glue dries more stronger it's going to strengthen <laughs> okay so now you want to add glue all onto the bottom of that and stick it onto this piece and you want to have it so that you have I think it was an inch or is it half let me just see this way here what I kind of worked out maybe it's three quarters yeah three quarters of an inch either side so you kind of want three quarters of an inch at the back you want this larger area at the front we're going to have the fencing all the way around and then I'm going to build up easter eggs and everything all here you may want a bigger area here so if you do then you need to extend this piece of grey board it's already 11 if you you know um if you're buying the A3 which I have then you can come out you know considerably longer I think it's about 14 so you could come all the way out here so it's entirely up to you but I'm going to now cover this quite a lot because this is you know going to be a nice decorative piece that's going to come out year after year and just absolutely cover the bottom here with my glue. Plenty of wiggle room with this Kalal. So, and it dries clear and again I'm going to be having lots and lots covering all of this so um, I'm not too worried but just spend time now making sure that you've got even three quarters of an inch on each side so I can come over a little bit there keep it nice and straight and again at this end here and that is it so I'm now going to leave this and um, let it set and I'm going to come back to it you know probably the next day so don't rush yourselves don't you know try and do all this in one day it's good to walk away from things and kind of think about it again so yeah that's where I'm going to leave it for now but for you I'll go straight on to it because obviously you're watching the video but um, yeah get it to this stage and uh, yeah I'm really pleased with it so far okay so it's now the next day and I have been working on some more of the box it's coming together so nicely it's really absolutely solid and it's going to you know hold some really heavy um you know pieces so you'll notice that inside i've done exactly the same thing i've covered all of the corners so just for strips some are bigger than others it was kind of just bits of off cuts i didn't want to cut into other sheets and this one's a slightly different color but it really doesn't matter but it's just added strength and it also means it's easy now for us to add our pattern papers and uh, yeah you don't have to you know faff about with the corners or anything like that so i've already gone and decorated the front so i've used this lovely stripe really like this one and then i've got polka dots on the ends so for the for the two main sides you'll want two pieces that are so this is bang on eight because we've extended it ever so slightly by adding you know these pieces on so they're exactly eight by six two pieces but then you'll want two pieces that are let's just check that one there yes yeah, so these are five and three eighths by six two pieces all right and then i've gone and cut all these pieces for inside so I've got two pieces here which are five and a quarter, so slightly smaller again because we're working inside, by just under six. And you'll see one will go in there nicely. 
okay and then one will go down that end there and then these two here are for the side and these are five and seven eighths of an inch by seven and seven eighths of an inch two pieces one for each side here again they all fit in once I've added my glue and kind of you know spread them all out and then this one here is for the base and this is five and a quarter by seven and seven eighths okay I will also list in my blog how many roughly of all these kind of pieces you need to cover all of the you know the the, the corners you know um, yeah all the corners so I'm going to go and stick them down I'm going to stick the base down first of all and then we're going to start working on the roof which is just off here which I've already started preparing Okay, so now I have a really nice lined storage box and I just, I'm so excited for this one. Okay, so next we want to start creating the roof. So I've got two pieces here. I can't remember if I gave the sizes to those or not at the beginning, but they're nine by five, two pieces. And you'll see I've just done exactly the same thing. Cut, you know, strips of paper that are the, you know, the height or the width of the grey board and I've just wrapped them around. So do this before, and this is kind of what you would want to do really with these side pieces, is you know do this before you then add these kind of hinges on the sides, just so that you cover the tops. You'll see there, I did actually go in and put little bits of cardstock just over the corners because it was bugging me. Sorry, paper, because it was bugging me that I could see the gray board. But if you do this first, can you see there, you can't see any of it, so yeah. But you'll, you'll notice that as you're doing it. But if you do it so that you don't have any along the top, because they're going to go like this, and I've got these pieces ready here, and this is what I'm going to now show you what we're going to do. So have them like that, okay? And then I've got one of these, which is the whole length of this, so it's uh, nine inches by two. And I'm going to pop my glue on... Uh, yeah, I'm going to do both sides because we want to start putting it into its shape and um, you'll probably want to do the triangle bits as well. Um, but it's fine because I can just stand this up for a minute. So I'm just covering this one and I'm just going to pop it on one side for the minute. Okay, so make sure it covers it all. So if it's a little bit longer, you know, that's good. You want it longer than rather than shorter because you can trim it, but you want to cover the grey board. You see that I've got no, no ends on it. And I've got a really nice, let me grab, this is what's going to go over the top. And it's got all of the bunting and that's going to be my roof. So it's not your, your conventional roof, but this is a whimsical storage box. But I think that's going to look really nice on the top there. So that's what I'm going for. So I thought this blue worked really nicely and helps that white kind of pop. You just get that nice kind of subtle blue kind of border all the way around the sides there. So make sure that's you know nice and secure. The cloud takes a few more minutes, but once it does start to grip, we all know how much I love this stuff. Okay, so what I would do is just make sure that you've got glue right in there. Okay, and then you want to grab the other one and you want to stick this one down. Let's move that out of the way. And you're going to be kind of working it as a hinge at the minute. So don't worry about, you know, having it like that or like that. Just kind of get it stuck because you'll be able to move this um, a little bit anyway. But you just want to just kind of get that folded over. And you want them kind of side by side, so there's kind of a gap, you know, so they're, they're just kind of, like when I open it up, a bit like when we do our mini albums and stuff, you have that kind of gap, you kind of want that. So again, if I bring it around, so there's a, there is a very thin gap there. Again, it's not the end of the world, but it will mean that you might, if you've gone up, say, this one's running uh, you know next to this it's coming up higher this side of your roof is going to be ever so slightly shorter so by keeping them you know so they're just touching and there's a gap it means they're going to be the same you know um, coming down each side so what I've gone ahead is I've prepped this one already and you'll see how that is going to fit in there and then that will be our roof 
Okay, you can see if I bring it up there and we're going to set it back a bit just like I did with the she shed and then you've got room to be able to decorate this, bunting, all that lovely stuff, you know, I've done a nice little, I think it said lavender, I'm trying to look up but it's just, oh yeah, number two lavender, I had a little sign on there, so you know, you've got that, all of that to do later. So this here is a piece, you want two pieces of grey board which is six and a quarter by three and a half and along the six and a quarter you want to mark at three and one eighth so right in the middle and then you're just gonna with a pencil just draw down and then just cut it out now I used my scissors just because I was being lazy but if you've got the Tim Holtz ones they do cut through because you know these are great real kind of industrial um, scissors like so but um, you know if you've got your trimmer at hand then use it but I'm just being lazy I've just it's underneath a load of stuff and I can't be bothered to remove it, so like that. Okay, so I've got you'll have two like this, and then I've got more blue. I need to trim some bits down, but you just want to cover each side. So will that one fit there? No, I have to do that one first. And just cover it over, and once you've stuck it down, just trim that off, work on another side, trim it off, and work on another side. So while that's kind of in its shape and sticking there. I'm going to do these ones here. Okay, so I've got all of those edges covered and then I've got another piece here, which again is that full width. Can you see now that's kind of staying in its shape? It's not moving too much on its own. So, you know, once you've got your triangle, you can kind of, you know, start to, you know, keep it in its shape. It's almost a right angle, actually. Just, just coming in slightly. So I'm going to add glue to the outside of this one and you want to stick it inside the roof. Again, it's optional, but it adds a lot of strength and it will make the inside look nice as well because I will cover this with paper. Um, so, you know, my idea for how I'm going to use this over Easter is it will have sweet treats in it and it will be in the in the living room or on the kitchen top and people can just kind of help themselves. So I'm going to put something on the outside maybe with treats you know some wording I'm, I'm going to have a look at my stamps when I start to decorate and just see what I can use but now I'm just going to pop that inside here kind of cup it in your hand just so it doesn't kind of lose its shape too much and just with your bone folder you can kind of go in there and just stick that down again if anything's overhanging you can trim it it's best to have it overhang then not long enough but um, yeah, just spend a minute getting that stuck down. Okay, so now what we want to do is I've got a piece here which is um, four and a half. So it's the length of one of these sides here. You'll need four pieces of this. So it's four and a half by, uh, what did I do there? One and a half, two or one is fine. But you just want to make sure you've got enough to be able to stick it you know, to each side. So I'm just going to cover one side at a time because you want to trim a little bit of this before we stick it in. And you're going to line it up like so okay don't worry if it doesn't come right down to the point it you don't need it to but you just want to stick it like this okay so it's on the back you can see the side of this piece here and this is how we're going to attach it inside here this is all going to be covered in decorative paper i'm going to add bunting here lots of you know it's going to be heavily decorated so all the corners and stuff although they look fine anyway but um, you can see there, but once it dries, you want to trim this piece off here. So I'm just going to go in just underneath there. It's easier to do that when you stuck it on than for me to tell you what angle you've got to cut out and stuff. It's just so much quicker to do it that way. So you want to do the same on the other side and on this piece as well. Okay, so with those four pieces, I'm just folding them in half and then just add glue to one side. I'll do this one again with you quickly like so, again sticking it on there um, and again just trim, that was very wet but I'll give those scissors a good clean after this but now we've got this kind of hinged piece that will sit perfectly in there and it's all again going to line that nicely and we can you know decorate all this in a moment okay so get the other one done okay that one's still drying so i'm going to crack on with this one so now what you want to do is you might find you want to mark basically we're going to stick this a quarter of an inch down i'm going to eyeball it because i know you know where that is but you're going to stick it in like so if you want to mark there with a pencil now then do so but i'm going to add the glue on the 
outside of these flaps but also on the actual side because that grey board you've got that two mil so just pop it along there as well because it's all just going to help you know stick the whole thing together okay so I'm going to pop that one in about a quarter of an inch down and you'll just need to hold it there for a minute until that grabs And then it will now stand up, you know, kind of sit up in this position, grab the other one and you're going to do the same. You're going to come down a quarter of an inch, but please check first. So I would almost, well, do what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put it on, but then I'm also going to, you know, kind of sit it on top and make sure it does close because, yeah, you might find you even want to measure it. But I'm just going to pop this in again about a quarter of an inch down. Just going to let it grab for a minute because I've still got time to reposition even you know if I need to move it a bit. Now you can pop it on. Yeah I need to move that just up a little bit so that's why you know use your liquid glue. It's just the same as the she shed. There we go that fits perfectly. Yeah you want it to slide down a bit. That's, I'm really pleased with that. That fits fine. So just now you can really kind of spend time on there, just making sure it's all really stuck down. It all looks a bit messy with the glue at the moment, but that all dries clear and we're going to be covering this just like we did with the vase. It's going to look lovely. Okay, so I've covered everything apart from this one here and I'm going to show you how to do that to get the angles. So for the top pieces, I just adore this bunting and with the polka dot and the blue, I just think it looks so sweet. So these are just under nine by five all right or just under again you know do check yourself this is just the ones I've used and then you're going to want four pieces of um, six by three and one eighth and along the six inch side here just as we did to cut the grey board for the the sides of the roof there just mark it three and then just draw a pencil down and then I actually used this one and just traced it around the other ones. So, um, you know, you don't have to do that on every single one. And then use your trimmer or your scissors. And as you cut, just remove the pencil line. Just so you haven't to rub it out. Like so. And then I'm just going to add that glue on the back and stick it down on the last one. Okay, so I am done for the minute. I am now going to think about the wheels and the decoration, the windows and everything. But you can see now how that will sit on. Obviously it's laying down, but it should, mine comes down about a quarter of an inch inside there. You can see it looks so cute. I absolutely adore this. Can't wait to decorate it. So yeah, go take a break now and uh, we'll start decorating it. Okay, so now I want to add my picket fence. So this is what I shared in one of my What Did I Get videos a while back now. And you buy, well, I've cut that piece off there. So that's, you know, the length that you get. It's a good, good length. Um, and what I've done, you can see it's really, you know, easy to move around and it's really easy to snip. So I just used my pliers here and I'll just show you there, but you can just, oh, actually, no, I didn't. I used my scissors and it cut really easily so let me just show you which is even better but look just cuts right through it's re it's kind of like a real soft wire so don't use your best scissors these are just old ones but um yeah you can see how easy it is to trim but what i found with this one is i've done five so one two three four five then bend and then i counted 21 there, and then bend and then can't remember what was along there but you do five again from this end that was already folded so actually it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen on the back and then fold and then another 21 fold and another five okay and then that will wrap perfectly around here it's not hugging the house because you don't or the building um, but it comes up you want it to come up Oh, it's hard to see. I take the roof off actually. I think we're going to work a bit easier. Yeah, it comes up to the edge here. Well, not right to the edge. It's about you got about one quarter all the way round of this green. My glue gun on, nice and hot here, 
and I'm going to start off with see you kind of once you stuck one down you can't really like bend it up too much so I probably don't need to add glue you know too in too many places so I'm just going to add a little bit on the bottom there and keep that nice and hot and a little bit on the corner too and then that's probably enough but you have to kind of be a hundred percent where you're sticking this so I think there keep everything nice and straight that's nice and secure there so what I'm going to do is because I can see I'm going to kind of follow this green line in the paper that's the line I'm going to follow so all I'm going to do is just every maybe every five is I'm just going to put a little bead of glue and then I can just kind of carefully lift it up over and just stick that down and just kind of hold it in place again you know be careful because obviously it is hot but when it's kind of a bit cooler you can push the kind of the glue and kind of flatten it a little bit so like now I'm going to just go in and just push that against the little fence there and it just kind of disguises it even more so I'm going to go round like I said every five I'm just going to pop some glue under okay so there is the fence how adorable is that it's this that I just for me Oh, just totally transforms it and then if I pop that back on again you imagine once the doors in place and the windows on the side oh it's so cute okay so next I'm gonna do the wheels now this again is completely optional but what I've gone ahead and done I think they're dry yeah might be a little bit no, I think they're okay so this is just the gray board and I actually drew around the bottom of my Kalau bottle okay you can use a die if you want but again I was being lazy and I couldn't be bothered to get up so this is a diameter of three and a quarter okay so I went and done that four times and then I've got two up here and I've got these two here which are just drying a little bit in the center and you can see what I've done now they're not perfect and to be honest again I'm not too worried but what you will want to do is I used a nail file and I just went around and just kind of, you know, smoothed out the sides. And I just cut these with my Tim Holt scissors. Um, you can use a cutting knife if you'd rather, but because it's a circle, you might obviously, you know, struggle a bit getting that angle. But they're kind of, they're all the same size, but some of them are a little bit wobbly, but it looks homemade. And again, you know, if you've got the Cricut Maker um, that will cut through this, then obviously use that but um, this worked fine for me. So I've done two already with the holes and I've got some doweling here. This is, again, in terms of mil, it's five mil and it's, this cuts really easily. And I've just basically cut this to the width of this bottom gray board piece here, which is, well, that would have been, that must have been, I thought that was, hang on a minute, let me just double check. Yeah, it's seven and this is seven and a quarter. Okay, so again with this one here, because this is going to be now the reason I've done it on the dowling is just basically to give support underneath if I do put something heavier in. And this is what I did use my pliers for, but it's so soft, it just cut like butter. I just took it off like so. And then just with a nail file, just Just clear up the bottom there but you're not going to see any of this it's all going to be hidden underneath and then you will see I'm going to stick it with hot glue just so it's flush with there so it's actually only in that two mil width of the grey board and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto my Cricut and make a wheel you know and or look at some images and then I'm going to stick that on get it cut so you're not going to see all this I'm going to paint over that in white again in a minute as well all the white's really done I've just used this acrylic is just to cover the the edge really because I'm going to cover all of this and I'm probably going to have pink kind of um, like wood effect on on the wheels there so you'll see that one and that one is going to go in like so and then I'm going to attach them with hot glue underneath but it just means then that any pressure at least this has gone through the card I mean if you want to have it sticking out more and make more of a feature than you can do but I wanted mine completely flush because I'm going to die cut something to go on the top and then I might put some hardware in the middle there so I'll get that one stuck down in a minute but to get the the kind of again I'm being really kind of lazy but just find the center and then I used my 
pokey tool, or did I? No, I didn't. I used some scissors and just, in fact, I think that can go that way a little bit. I think that's better. Just kind of pop the scissors in to start it off and then I just put both ends in a really lazy way. But, you know, I'm just trying to show you ways to do these things without having to go out and get, you know, special supplies. So you see now that goes in there, but I did trim, grab my other ones because these are really pointy, just trim off the excess there because you don't want any of that bulk. And like I said, you know, it doesn't matter what this looks like because it's all going to be covered. Um, and even if you don't have a Cricut, you know, just die cut some circles and some pattern paper and you can just cover that. So, you know, there's lots of ways to do this, but now you just see it's in there like so. And then if I just lay that one down over that one and then just draw through and again, probably just go straight in actually like that. So again, I'm not too worried about the paint coming off any of this. It was the paint was really just to cover, like I said, the the, um, the outside bit. So with my hot glue, I'm going to pop it just on the very end, and then I can add a bit more. And I'm going to just kind of push it. Oh, not that far through. It's probably covered now in bits of grey board, but get it in place. No, it's already starting to stick. But what I'm going to do is put a blob on there and flatten it with my finger once it cools a little bit. And then I'll put another piece just around inside there because you're not going to see any of that because it's all going to be hidden underneath. Okay, so I've done these now and these are nice and they're solid. So they're not going anywhere. And I also covered the bottom with a piece of six and three quarters by ten and three quarters. Now, with these ones here, I did squash down the glue. Can you see? I mean, they don't look anything special in there, but no one's going to see it. But you do not You do want to push that glue down. You don't want it too bulky because what's going to happen is you want the doweling to be able to rest on here. So, I mean, mine's just on the ends there. So you might want to go slightly longer with the doweling, maybe seven and three eighths. But all that is is a support. This isn't really kind of, you know, these aren't going to, actually move so I'm going to be adding hot glue you know so they actually glue onto this side of this as well um, but what you want to do is work out where you want them positioned because you know it does change the look of the the wagon depending on you know if you've got them really far apart so let's just pop this one in here just cut away some of the glue there because that was a bit bulky but look so you imagine let me grab the roof you got a picture of these with all the detail on. I mean, you would have seen it anyway at the beginning with the photo, so it all comes together. But doesn't it look cute? Oh, it just looks adorable. So you need to, yeah, think about whether you want them further apart, like right, you know, one on each end like that, or closer together. I mean, that's not going to look right, but I think I'm happy with having one there. Like I said, I'll just sort that out in a minute, and one kind of there. So I've got about maybe an inch there showing at each end. So I'm going to work with this one first of all. I'm going to lay that back down. Now I've just cut away some of the glue on the top half. Can you see there? So now that can sit. You want that to be flush if you want it to stick. Because that's what's going to really give this lots and lots of strength. So again, just make sure you've got it an inch down. I mean, this is the way I'm doing it. Like I said, not everybody's going to even add the wheels, so. But I always like to do something a bit extra. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is just pop it just underneath there on both sides and just let that set. I'm not going to touch, you know, play with it. So they are completely flush with the bottom and they are stuck really well, that's solid. That one's just ready, it's just literally got a few more minutes and then that'll be completely solid. But now look, oh my gosh. I mean ignore all of that because it looks rubbish at the minute but let's just pop this on. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. 
I can't wait. So that is everything done in terms of the actual structure. Now is a fun part of just looking at stuff to decorate it. So I'm going to get my door together, my windows, what I'm going to use to cover the wheels, and then I'm going to have bunting, I'm going to have little Easter signs, and I'm thinking about having something, I don't know, maybe some steps or something there. I may just leave that, I'm not sure. Or I might have, you know, something to pull it. Um, like a handle or something, we'll see. Okay, so now I have added on these really lovely wagon wheels. This pink with the holographic cardstock I think looks fantastic. Now the file for this was just what I made on my Cricut machine, so I will put the file in my blog post for this. So if you would like to, you know, print it off or if you've got a cutting machine yourself, then you'll be able to pop this file in and you'll be able to get your machine to cut it for you. So um, I'll give you the measurements. Let me just grab my ruler here because the diameter of this one, again, depending on what size you've done your initial wheel, you may want to shrink yours down or make it bigger, but it's three inches. Okay, so I've done them, so I've stuck them on all four sides, so I've just done a three inch die cut or, you know, cut a three inch circle in holographic cardstock and then put the cut file over the top so you get that cool effect. What I've then gone and done, which is now the fun part, because it is just all down to that decoration, is I have done all the little bits and pieces that I'm going to be adding. So I've used the windows from the summer cottage that I shared and it's this set here from the Simply Made Crafts, sorry, from Card Making Magic. And uh, again, I've, you know, I shared this, it was the um, unboxing kind of thing when I just showed the new collection, that was it. Sorry, I was just thinking about something else at the same time as talking, I'm not very good at that. Yeah, I showed you how to make these in the Summer Cottage tutorial. So I will link that here somewhere, go to that, have a little look and you know, you can make them up, but they're really fun. And again, I've used the uh, holographic, no, this is just silver card in the background there just to just to create a reflection really, but the, the portion of these I think works really well. Sorry if I shook the camera there, but it's gonna go, you imagine obviously the roof comes down a little bit. Now I won't put the, you do get the planter, the window planter up with this as well, but I'm not adding that. So you'll see there, that's gonna sit about there. The window planter is just gonna catch on the top of the, the fence there. So I'm gonna add flowers, just stick them onto it, but you're gonna have them like that. and. I'm not going to stick the shutters down, I'm going to leave them so that they can be moved because I just think it's quite nice to have that. So I've done those, so they're going to go, gosh, they're going to go on both sides. I think I'm just going to pop the roof there for the minute. Then I've made my door from scratch. I did have, it was a Simply Made Crafts, let me, here it is, I've still got it nearby. This one here, which is the small ornate milk box, and I thought I might have been able to have made that door, but the, the, that door, it just doesn't, it gets lost on the front there. So I've just made one with that as my kind of, you know, inspiration really with the panels. And I'm gonna print off a small little letter box with letters, or I might do something like eggs only, or something a bit more, or I might just have Easter on there, I don't know. But you'll see that later on, but I'm just gonna go onto the computer and, and type that and print that off. But yeah, this is really nice if you, you know, if you do have it, then there are elements here that you can use, because I've actually die cut this here, which you'll see, and I'm gonna have that all stuck together, and I'm gonna pop it on the top here. So that's the idea for that. And then I have gone and grabbed the other card making magic die set. And that's this one here, which is the province collection. And you have the trellis, which I've done. You've got bunting, so I am gonna add more bunting onto this. I've done the milk churn. I've done the planter or the trowel. Trough, trowel, no trough. <laughs> yeah, and the basket, there's little plant pots there, there's loads of pieces and you'll see I've gone and cut all sorts, I've got some from old collections in there as well, but um, I'm just going to be sticking them down, I think there are other stamped pieces, I've still got these left over, I've got little flowers here from other stamps that I've done and they're going to look nice, so you know kind of go away and just stamp and die cut and just raid what you have and yeah just throw anything you've got really at it and see how it comes together which is what I plan to do, so I'm going to pop this all on high speed because I don't need to tell you, you know, stick that there and pop that there. You'll see all that in the photos and when I kind of talk through it at the end. I'm also going to add some Easter eggs and some more Easter themed pieces to it. But uh, yeah, grab a cup of tea, sit back and enjoy me putting it all together.
Okay, so I think I am where I want to be with this. As always, I do add little bits here and there, so if I find something small and cute and Easter themed, then I can always add it, but I'm really, really pleased with how this is all ended up. So I've added my silver tinsel all around the roof, which you'll see there. Then I have used this happy birthday, happy birthday, happy Easter. This was from the Hell's Couple Ditch something summer magazine that she'd done last year. These were just some tulips from a Christina Griffiths, quite a new set actually, I just had them left over. I've got a butterfly there, so that was the roof kind of done. And then on the side you'll see I have added like the green kind of vines there, all up this trellis. I die cut the trellis in white again because I found the craft card just didn't quite go, so I've put white over the top. And then I've put all white roses, which I've used with my glue gun there. These are beautiful, I'm going to say they're daisies, they've got brads through the middle, they were made by my friend Kimmy, she sent them as some friend mail and I always like to, when I'm sent something, it's nice to put it on something that I will keep forever and bring out year after year, so they're a nice little kind of rem reminder of that. Then here I've just got, these were just some little stamps that I'd done before and hadn't used them, a little wooden bunny rabbit there, so that's one side, then if I come round to the front this just looks brilliant. I'm trying to hold the lid as I do this. So I've got these over the top <laughs> and oversized carrots, but I really like them. So yeah, it's, you know, in terms of proportions, it's completely wrong, but hey ho, I don't care. Then I have done the kind of um, the circle window there. So it's just to kind of give the, you know, illusion that there's a little attic inside. I've done the bunting in white, just again, it stands out better. And then with the door, so you saw me, you know, add all of these pieces, but then I also just use my circle punches and just cut a couple, just a plain one and a scalloped one, and then cut it in half and just stuck it behind, just so it kind of finished it a little bit more. That's just some Nouveau drops, just a yellow. I just done quite a big blob of it and now that's dry. The letters I didn't print, I just wrote it myself. I thought I'm not, you know, I don't need to do that really. I've put number 12 just randomly, don't know why I chose 12, but I have. And then you'll see here, oh, again, just trying to hold all that, but I've got the milk churn and then I've done, so it's got this plant growing out and these are just from all my dry flowers. I just kind of, I had loads of little ones at the bottom, so I put them out with some hot glue. And then on this side here, you'll see I've got a pile of Easter eggs which I love. Again, just use my hot glue to build them up, put a little vine behind there. And then I've also got a tea set that I have glued right down in there. And that's just stuff I've had lying around. I've used little bits of them in projects before that you may have seen. And then on the very front there as well, I've just used more little stamped flowers. But all I want to do now to finish it is I'm going to add this kind of faux pulley just to again complete it and I think it kind of then gives the idea that you can you know pull this along if you wanted to so I've gone and already stuck a lot of it down but you're again if you're doing everything as I've done it then this is a piece of one and a half by four which is the white and then the pink is one and a quarter by where well, it be three, it was three and seven eighths, but you butt right up to this end, and leave a border on those three sides there. And then along the longer side on both pieces, just score it half an inch, stick it on and then fold it over. So I've got two lots of white and one of the pink. Okay. And I'm going to stick that underneath here. I mean, it could be, if you wanted to do stairs or something, you can do, see there how it's going to be. But then I've got this, which I just done as a little handle. And it's just using some rectangle dies, and basically I've just used one size, then the next size down, and then the one that's smaller again, I've die cut through both pieces, just to create a little bit of a handle. So what I'm going to do, grab my glue, is I'm just going to add, put glue on the end of this one. In fact, you don't need to worry about the border at this end, because you're not going to see it, so, it does, you know, take it for what it is, you know, you can, lots of people do different ones here. But I'm just going to stick that, so it's in the centre. So just make sure you've got you know the same amount overhanging here. And it just looks like it's a little handle, you know, you can put your fingers through there and pull it along. But you might want to do a circular one, you might want to put some rope there, like I said, you might do some stairs. So whatever will suit you know your style. And then I'm gonna add fat. I'm gonna use hot glue because I've still got my glue gun on. So I'm just gonna run just so this is really nice and secure. And then I'm going to sit that. And there we go. 
So now if I bring it around here, you can see and you could pull it along with that. <laughs> so if you have made your wheels so that they really turn and that's all stuck with hot glue, I stuck that with hot glue as well, I went back over it. It's really, really strong. But I think it just finishes it off and I like that because with that score line there, it just falls down. You want it to, to fall down so it, yeah. It looks a bit like a slide, but it, it, I think it's what kind of really does make it look like a wagon. And uh, yeah, I'm in love with it. I think it's really over the top, colourful, happy. It's going to look great as a centrepiece. I'm going to have Easter eggs all around it. I'm going to sit it on some, either some green moss or some like fake grass, some, you know, um, like AstroTurf kind of thing. You can buy like rolls of it. So I'm going to create a really nice scene and I'll update the photos nearer to Easter so you can, you know, see what I ended up doing with it. But uh, yeah, I am over the moon with it. So I hope you've enjoyed this first tutorial for this year's Easter series. And I look forward to seeing your versions. Of course, it doesn't have to be Easter themed. Like I said, you can do this as any kind of storage. You might want to turn it into a Christmas project. I know lots of you, you know, put your twist on it. You could do Halloween, all kinds of themes with this. It will look fabulous. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing what you make. So thank you for watching and I'll be back again very soon with another tutorial. Bye.